financing leasing of aircrafts and ships and pooled funds of private equity through a variable company structure. Foreign direct investment and overseas investment. The rules and regulations for foreign direct investment and overseas investments will be simplified to one, facilitate foreign direct investments, two, nudge prioritization, and three, promote opportunities for using Indian rupee as a currency for overseas investment. NPS Vatsalya. NPS Vatsalya, a plan for contribution by parents and guardians for minors, will be started. On attaining the age of majority, uh, the plan can be converted seamlessly into a normal NPS account. Use of technology. We have successfully used technology for improving productivity and bridging inequality in our economy during the past 10 years. Public investment in digital infrastructure and innovations by the private sector have helped in improving access of all citizens, particularly the common people, to market resources, education, health and services. We will step up adoption of technology towards digital, digitalization of the economy. Ease of doing business. For enhancing ease of doing business, we are already working on the Jan Vishwas Bill 2.0. Further, states will be incentivized for implementation of the business reforms, action plans, and digitalization. Data and statistics. For improving data governance, collection, processing and management of data and statistics, different sectoral ba databases, including those established under the Digital India mission, will be utilized with active use of technology tools. New pension scheme. The committee to review the NPS has made considerable progress in its work. I am happy to... I am happy... I am happy that the staff side of the National Council of the Joint Consultative Machinery for Central Government Employees has taken a constructive approach. A solution will be evolved which addresses the relevant issues while maintaining fiscal prudence to protect the common citizens. Budget estimates for 24-25. For the year 24-25, total receipts other than borrowings and the total expenditure are estimated at 32.07 lakh crore rupees and 48.21 lakh crore rupees respectively. The net tax receipts are estimated at 25.83 lakh crore rupees. The fiscal deficit is estimated at 4.9% of the GDP. The gross and the net market borrowings through dated securities during 24-25 are estimated at 14.01 lakh crore rupees and 11.63 lakh crore rupees respectively. Both will be less than that in 23-24. The fiscal consolidation path announced by me in 2021 has served our economy very well and we aim to reach the deficit below 4.5% next year. The government is committed to staying the course. From 2026-27 onwards, our endeavor will be to keep the fiscal deficit each year such that the central government's debt will be on a declining path as percentage of GDP. I will now move to part B. Indirect taxes. Sir, I start with GST. It has decreased tax incidence on the common man, reduced compliance burden and logistics cost for trade and industry, and enhanced revenues of the central and the state governments. It is a success of vast proportions. 
to multiply the benefits of GST, we will strive to further simplify and rationalize the tax structure and endeavor to expand it to the remaining sectors. My proposals for custom duties, my proposals for customs duties intend to support domestic manufacturing, deepen local value addition, promote export competitiveness, and simplify taxation while keeping the interest of the general public and consumers surmount. In Budget 22-23, we reduce the number of customs duty rates. I propose to undertake a comprehensive review of the rate structure over the next six months to rationalize and simplify it for ease of trade, removal of duty inversion, and reduction of disputes. I shall now take up sector-specific customs duty proposals. Medicine and medical equipments to provide relief to cancer patients. I propose to fully exempt three more medicines from customs duties. I also propose changes in the BCD on X-ray tubes and flat panel detectors for use in medical X-ray machines under the phased manufacturing program so as to synchronize them with the domestic capacity addition. Mobile phone and related parts. With a three-fold increase in domestic production and almost a hundred-fold jump in exports of mobile phones over the last six years, the Indian mobile industry has matured. In the interest of consumers, I now propose to reduce the BCD on mobile phone mobile PCBA and mobile charger to 15%. Critical minerals. Minerals such as lithium, copper, cobalt and rare earth elements are critical for sectors like nuclear energy, renewable energy, space, defense, telecommunications and high-tech electronics. I propose to fully exempt customs duties on 25 critical minerals and reduce BCD on two of them. This will provide a major fillip to the processing and refining of such minerals and help secure their availability for these strategic and important sectors. Solar energy. Energy transition is critical in the fight against climate change. To support energy transition, I propose to expand the list of exempted capital goods for use in the manufacture of solar cells and panels in the country. Further, in view of sufficient domestic manufacturing capacity of solar gas, glass and tinned copper interconnect, I propose not to extend the exemption of custom duties provided to them. Marine products. India's seafood exports in the last financial year touched an all-time high of more than 60,000 crores of rupees. Frozen shrimp accounted for about two-thirds of these exports. To enhance their comp competitiveness, I propose to reduce BCD on certain broodstock, polychaete worms, shrimp and fish feed to 5%. I also propose to exempt customs duty on various inputs for manufacture of shrimp and fish feed. Leather and textile. Similarly, to enhance the competitiveness of exports in the leather and textile sectors, I propose to reduce BCD on real down-filling material from duck or goose. I am also making additions to the list of exempted goods for manufacture of leather and textile garments, footwear and other leather articles for export. To rectify inversion in duty, I propose to reduce BCD subject to conditions on methylene diphenyl di isocyanate MDI for manufacture of spandex yarn from 7.5 to 5%. Furthermore, 
the export duty structure on raw hides, skin and leather is proposed to be simplified and rationalized. Precious metals. To enhance domestic value addition in gold and precious metal jewelry in the country, I propose to reduce customs duties on gold and silver to 6% and that of platinum to 6.4%. Other metals, steel and copper are important raw materials. To reduce the cost of production, I propose to remove the BCD on ferro-nickel and blister copper. I am also continuing with nil BCD on ferrous scrap and nickel cathode and concessional BCD of 2.5% on copper scrap. Electronics. To increase value addition in the domestic electronics industry, I propose to remove the BCD subject to conditions on oxygen-free copper for manufacture of resistors. I also propose to exempt certain parts for manufacture of connectors. Chemicals and petrochemicals. To support existing and new capacities in the pipeline, I propose to increase the BCD on ammonium nitrate from 7.5% to 10%. Plastics, PVC flex banners are bio, non-biodegradable and hazardous for environment and health. To curb their imports, I propose to raise the BCD on them from 10 to 25%. Telecommunication equipment. To incentivize domestic manufacturing, I propose to increase the BCD from 10 to 15% on PCBA of specific, specified telecom equipment. Trade facilitation. To promote domestic aviation and boat and ship MRO, I propose to extend the period of ex period for export of goods imported for repairs from six months to one year. I'll read that again. To promote domestic aviation and boat and ship maintenance, repair and operations, I propose to extend 